Did you know that anxiety is often a symptom of certain medical conditions? I got a message the other day, somebody who wants me to talk about anxiety. So I did some searching and I'm going to give you guys a nice list of how to deal with anxiety attacks, which can sometimes turn into panic attacks. But um, the first thing I noticed when I read it was that people already automatically assume that they're having a panic attack because of an emotional situation or something like that. But I found out that sometimes it actually is a physical illness manifesting as panic, as depression, or as other kinds of symptoms. So the first thing I want to say before I even get started is if you're having problems with panic and anxiety, go to your doctor, get a full workup done, and make sure you're physically healthy before you think that it's an emotional or a mental health issue, okay? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give the introduction and then I'm going to explain to you what I found out about anxiety. Hey guys, it's me. It's Queen El Haru, and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and pass it on to somebody else who might like it too. Also, please drop us a positive comment in the comment section and stick around to the end of the video because after I tell you what I found about anxiety, I'm going to talk about and answer some uh, comments that were left in previous videos. Uh, if you want to get a reading done, if you want to send me a gift from my Amazon wish list, if you would like to send a donation to Ask an Aquarius, if you want to get some Ask an Aquarius merchandise or some Archangel Michael merchandise, um, or if you want to join me on Patreon, all that information is underneath this video. Okay, so check it out. All right, so after you've gone to the doctor to make sure that your anxiety is not medically you know, related, I got the first six uh, tips from one website, and then I have some more from a different one. Now, these were given by uh, people who were um, experts in the field of, of um, anxiety and panic. So um, I'm going to give them to you and you can decide if you want to try them or if they would be helpful for you or whatever the case is. But these are the suggestions that I found from researching. The first suggestion said to drink more water. Apparently, some of the times the things that you're taking in such as caffeine or sugar, which we're going to see on this list too, can cause you to have panic and anxiety. So the first thing they said, other than reducing those things, is to drink more water to cleanse and flush out your system daily. Um, according to what they said, people need to drink a liter of water a day. Some said more, some said less. But the consensus, the one I saw the most, was one liter. So the question is, if you're having anxiety and panic, check your water intake. That could be part of what's going on. Number two, try to eat a cleaner diet. When I looked to see what cleaner diet was talking about, it was talking about less sugar, less processed foods, less caffeine. Um, and this could be like, you know, coffee, obviously anything that's sweet, um, looking at the intake, you know, how much sugar is in the things that you take in. Cause some things you don't even realize have sugar in them, have sugar in them. So it said that this was one, um, uh, and sticking to like more fruits and vegetables, even if you do eat meat, but trying to eat like leaner meats, not processed meats. Um, it said that that would be helpful. That could be helpful as well. Number three, reduce alcohol consumption. Now, some people report that this makes them anxious. I've never experienced this before, so I'm not sure if, if everybody has this problem, but alcohol usually relaxes me, not hypes me up. But I do know people. <laughs> I've seen people at the bar and on the corner and all kinds of places where alcohol lifted their anxiety. 
So it depends on your personal chemistry with this one. And if it's a problem, they said to reduce your alcohol consumption. Number four, get outside more. Um, they said, and this is very true of like Native American traditions and things like that. There's other traditions that do this as well. But being around trees, being at the beach, being around, you know, things like that, grass, putting your feet in the grass, they call it earthing. But basically, it brings down your anxiety level the more you're in nature. And they've done actual studies on it. And I know for a fact, when I was younger and I lived in Philadelphia, I used to always go to Valley Green by myself all the time just to hug trees and to touch them and to sip out of water. And I used to do it all the time. And it definitely does help your anxiety come down, especially when you, I used to leave my phone. I take my phone, turn it off and spend an hour or two in the woods by the Creek, skipping stones, you know, and just that type of activity was enough to bring my anxiety down. Limit your time on social media. Some people have a real problem with social media. I really don't, but I know a lot of people that do. And the problem is, is that they're on social media, probably not always with the most pleasant people. Sometimes the people on your page or on other people's pages, if you're leaving comments, can be very nasty. And this nasty, negative, trolling kind of energy causes a lot of people to have anxiety because they're constantly on the defense as they're leaving, you know, comments or talking to people. That's why you ever notice a lot of people lurk on social media. They never leave a comment. They never say anything, but they know everything that's going on because they're lurkers and lurkers lurk so they don't get into shit with trolls. So some people, they're on social media all the time and this is a real problem for them. So if you're one of those people, it says limit your time on social media. I also would say check whose page you're on. If you're around people who are chaotic or have chaotic people on your page, guess what? You have the ability to delete them, to block them if you want to. Sometimes just blocking dummies <laughs> or blocking trolls, let's call them what they are. Sometimes blocking trolls is the best way to <laughs> handle your social media. And if you can't do that, limiting your time is the next best way. Number six, exercise and meditate daily. My doctor said that exercise is the least utilized form of depression and anxiety control. So those, I've, I've heard that many, many times. That's definitely correct. But like I said, also the meditation. You guys know I meditate every single day. And I meditate really because I really just, I need it. I, I just, I mean, after all the stuff that I've done, I really just need it. So according to what they're saying here, they're saying that meditation is also another way to reduce anxiety. And it definitely does lower your blood pressure. It calms you down. So it would make perfect sense. So if you have like maybe some guided meditations on your phone, you can use them when you feel yourself getting anxious and help bring that vibration down. Now we have some more from the other site. Uh, this one here says to use music. I like this one a lot. Aquarius generally like music. And it says here, if you can listen to music that is a de-stressor. So this would be like, for most of us, this would be like calm songs, jazz, um, you know, maybe nature sounds, flute music, stuff like that. Experiment with different types of music that you may not necessarily usually listen to. But I've come to find that those types of things like nature sounds, um, I have one that's flutes and pianos, you know, YouTube is great for these kind of things. It has all this kind of stuff, meditations, this kind of music, all this stuff is on YouTube. Just take your time and explore a bit and find some things that really work for you. The next one says here, <laughs> snuggle with your spouse. So if you have a spouse or a pet, <laughs> you know, or some stuffed animals, you know, snuggling. Snuggling is something that is said to reduce stress. 
Um, so you could, maybe if you're feeling bad, you might want to grab yourself a Care Bear or something. There's nothing wrong with it. Grab a pillow or something, you know, and just kind of snuggle and let that energy, you know, calm you. It's all about calming down, you know, and this seems to be a great way to do that as well. Now, they mentioned um, meditation before and they mentioned exercise. This site mentions yoga. I do yoga so often. Yoga is probably the most consistent exercise I've done in my lifetime. Um, and people think it's easy, but them poses is not hard. <laughs> them poses are not easy to hold. Like you got to, you know, stretch yourself around. And um, this is said to be good for anxiety too, because you're focusing on the poses. You're focusing on your breath. You're focusing on not falling on the floor. <laughs> so if you're anxious about something and you're really focusing, the anxiety level will go down as you focus away from what is making you anxious. So if your family's making you anxious, your job is making you anxious, and you're doing yoga and you're focusing on that, you have the tendency not to focus on the things that are making you anxious. So it can make you feel a lot better. Be in control of your life. A lot of times people have anxiety because their life is out of control. They have no boundaries. Everything is going wrong. <laughs> Everything. And the first thing that would be smart to do is to start to address the things that you can change. Because a lot of stuff you can fix, you can change, you can work towards making better. Maybe not everything, but to make a list of the things you can do something about. And the things that are specifically giving you anxiety. So if you have anxiety because your job is not that great, start looking for a new job. <laughs> you know, um, if you have anxiety because your relationship isn't that good, start finding ways to address what's going wrong in your relationship. If you're having anxiety because your children are out of control, start finding maybe a child psychologist or books or whatever you need to start to figure out how to calm down your children. Whatever your situation is, address it. If you don't have boundaries with people, set them. Because I've come to find that a lot of times your anxiety is triggered by other people. It's often triggered externally. So it's the nosy neighbor, you know. It's the aunt that's always talking smack to you, you know. When you put up boundaries with these people, you don't have to worry about getting anxiety. I had a family member who always gave me anxiety. I stopped talking to her. I stopped taking her phone calls. She went on to give somebody else <laughs> a hard time because I wouldn't take her calls anymore. So sometimes something as simple as that can decrease your anxiety. The next one says, let's see here. Oh, laughter. Laughter is one a lot of people talked about. There's something called laughter therapy. And it's used at a lot of different medical facilities. And it's very easy. It helps with depression and it helps with anxiety. Basically, for two hours a day, they tell you to watch things that are funny. Watch comedies. Things that are funny, like hysterical, like anything that's funny to you. So comedy might be funny, stand-up comedy. I laugh at the Golden Girls. When the Golden Girls comes on, I laugh till I cry, you know? So you will get things that are funny. Um, who stand-up do you like? I sometimes like Kevin Hart. Um, I like Cat Williams sometimes. I like different comedians sometimes. So I'll watch their stuff. And they say for two hours a day to do this and it helps to lower your anxiety. So it's worth a try. And laughter therapy is well documented. If you want to Google about it, you can see all kinds of studies about it. Be with those you love. So if you don't have a spouse to be with, maybe you have a sister, maybe you have a best friend, maybe you have a mentor, maybe your parents are particularly cool, you know, spend time with people that you care about. It'll help your anxiety. If you're having problems with your mom or your dad and they're a pain in the behind, <laughs> get out of the house and go spend time with somebody you care about. At least for that time that you're away from that situation, your anxiety will be a lot better. Let's see. 
Ooh, caffeine. We mentioned this one before, but I'm going to mention it again because it, it came up by itself in this list. It said in this list that caffeine um, encourages anxiety because caffeine can make you what they call jittery. So it says here that you should cut back on caffeine. So if you don't need to drink it, like for me, I have to drink coffee. In the morning time, I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. And when I wake up, if I don't have some coffee, I'm a cranky somebody. Sometimes I sit here with my carnelian crystal and my coffee, and I just pray. <laughs> I just pray for a better attitude, you know? So some of us need to drink our coffee. But I don't need three and four cups. I used to drink too much coffee. I just need one cup. There was times when I would be having two, three, and four, just one. One is more than enough. So if you have anxiety, you might want to cut back even more with that caffeine. And remember, read the labels of the stuff that you're eating because sometimes you'll find caffeine, sugar, salt, and you'll be like, that's in here? You don't even know what's in there. So be really careful with that, okay? It says here that caffeine can actually make people anxious who nothing is really wrong, <laughs> but they've had so much caffeine, they're just amped up, you know? So um, I think certain teas have caffeine too. And of course they have the decaffeinated brands. So you can still have the sensation without the caffeine. So pay very close attention to labels for caffeine and sugar. Those came up repeatedly. And artificial sweeteners too, they came up as well. And the last one says to keep a journal. And I like this one a lot because journaling, writing, anything creative, really painting, uh, designing, anything creative can really help with your anxiety because you're putting all of that nervous energy into a project. So when it comes to journaling, you're writing, you're writing out what's bothering you. You're writing out what you're grateful for. You're writing everything out. So that can put some of that energy into what you're doing. And then, like I said, you can go take it a step further, write a book, you know, uh, do some pictures, uh, do some, you know, make some clothes. The more creative you are, the less anxious a lot of people will be because they're putting that energy into something meaningful. All right. So now we have all of those. All right. We did good. That was our last one. So now, guys, I am going to. I'm going to read some of our positive comments. OK, I'm trying to get a good look at them because y'all see me squinting. <laughs> I don't see that good and I need to get my glasses. All right, the first one comes from Bo Zen. Hey, Bo Zen. Bo Zen said, Aquarius Moon, I definitely need space and people take offense to it. I agree with you with this 100%. I don't know why that is. Sometimes people really seriously do take offense to another person wanting to have space. Um... Some of the times it's just insecurity because they, you know, want to spend time with that person. But you have to give people space. I don't care who it is, if it's your partner, if it's your child, you have to give people space to kind of like do them, you know. So if your partner or somebody asks you for space or if you can tell they need space, if your friend needs space, let them have the space. It's okay. They'll be back. <laughs> if y'all really, if y'all solid, they will be back. And if they not back, then they probably don't belong in your life anyway. So I agree with that 100%. And being an Aquarius, we run across this a lot. Sapphire Moonbeam. Hey, Sapphire Moonbeam. Sapphire Moonbeam is um, the woman, the artist, who did one of the decks that I reviewed. Um, it was, uh, one of the magical, beautiful decks and I was looking over here to see if I still have it out, but I don't, but, um, Sapphire's deck was beautiful and all these colors and, you know, it was quite gorgeous. Sapphire Moonbeam said, thank you for the wonderful unboxing video for my Moonbeam Magic Oracle card deck. That's the name of it in case you guys want to check out the video. Um, it's so nice to be appreciated for the art 
and writing and love I put into it. I spent many years creating it. May you discover the magic in every day. Bright blessings. Sapphire, thank you so much. It's a beautiful message. And it definitely is appreciated. I've used it a bunch of times <laughs> since I got it. What I really love about it are the colors. The colors just draw me right in. So thank you so much. All right, guys. Let me see. That was our last one. So you guys... Tell me what you think about the tips for anxiety. Tell me if you have tried any of these or if you have anxiety. And if you have anxiety and you haven't tried this, try this <laughs> and let me know if any of these help you. Okay? And you come back soon because I got so much more to say. See you later.